You understand that? Now, since we don't know what happens, we need some way of, of, of eliminating these, right? And getting to the one that it is. And there's a way to do it. Before I tell you how to do it, I want you all to understand something before we proceed. In this class, we will not be interested at all in actually figuring out how low this goes or how high these, these humps are or how low the valleys are. We will not be worried about that in this class. For a parabola, we can always find the highest point, lowest point, but for a general polynomial, we cannot. All right? We cannot. Not in, not in college algebra. That's what we do in calculus. In calculus, you basically take any function and go be able to find the highest and lowest points. But here, all we're going to do is, you know, you'll see as we do this problem, when you draw it, you're just going to make sure that, you know, if it, if it comes in, it comes down like this and goes back up. Let's say that's what it did. Some of you might draw it like the black one. Some of you might draw it like the red one. Some of you may come way down and back up. Everyone's going to have a slightly different picture but we'll all do the same thing. We'll be either below or, or above. Understand? Okay, so how in the world are we going to determine which of these it is? Well, I have good news. It's not hard. If you've done all this, you've already done all the work. Here's what you do. You go back to the f factored version right here when you factored it. You go back to this. Okay, that's our factored version, right? That was right before we set them each equal to zero. And what you're going to do is you're going to look at the powers on the factors. What? What do I mean? See that two? That's the power on that factor x. This is a factor. The power on that is one. Here's another factor. The power on that is one. Okay, so do you see that there are three, three powers here? Yes? You're going to look at that and you're going to determine whether or not it's an even number or an odd number. Even or odd. Okay, this one is what? Even. Okay? And any time it's even, that means that at that x-intercept, you're going to bounce. Okay? So look at these pictures. See how when I'm drawing this, look at the green one. Doesn't it look like I come down and I bounce off the x-axis and go back up? Right, there's a bouncing, a bouncing happening here. As opposed to, look at this red one. What happens when I get to that x-intercept? I don't bounce, right? I cross through, don't I? Okay, so if you're an even, if this is an even power, you will bounce off at that x-intercept, which means that if it's odd, you're gonna do what? What do you think? Odd, right? Now, remember, I'm saying the 1 is odd. I'm not saying 8 is odd. I'm saying the 1 is odd. That means I'm going to cross here. And then over here, what's the power? 1, it's odd. Odd means we do what here? Cross. The biggest mistake students make is that when they're trying to determine whether or not you bounce or cross, they're not, they don't look at the powers. They look at the numbers here. They say, oh, zero's even, I bounce. Oh, eight's even, I bounce. No, okay? It's the power of the factor. And that power on that factor, this thing is, what we're doing here with the, with the odd and the even is, is what's called like this, this odd and even stuff. That's called finding, finding the multiplicity of the factor. Ooh, squeaky one. That's called finding the multiplicity of the factor. So if your multiplicity is even, you bounce. If it's odd, you cross. So with that knowledge, let's go back and let's draw this. And there's only one way to draw it now. Okay, there's only one way we can draw this. All right, so we have that at where, when we get to negative one, when we get to negative one, what are we supposed to do? 
Negative one? Cross. Careful. Yeah, negative one's over here, right? At negative one, we're supposed to cross. That means when I'm drawing this, I'm going to come through here and I'm going to cross through the x-axis. Do you all understand what I mean by cross through? I'm going to cross through here, coming through the x-axis. Maybe I want to kind of put that together a little better. There, there we go. Okay, so I cross through. I've now crossed through. Now I've got to connect back to this point, right? Like I'm back in kindergarten. I'm trying to connect the dots, right? These two dots have to be connected. But when I get to zero, what's going to happen? I'm going to bounce. So when I come back up, I need to bounce right back off and come back down. So I'm going to draw it like this. See that? Don't come up above the, don't come up here because then you've crossed through the x-axis. You just bounce. And then I'm going to have to connect to this dot, right? And when I get to that, I need to cross through, which makes sense, doesn't it? Like if I'm down here somewhere and I have to do, right, smooth, continuous. I have to come back through here, then and it's obvious I have to cross through because look at this side, right? There. That's what the graph looks like. Now, it, you could, this, remember I was saying people can have different answers, right? Someone else in the class could have drawn it this way and it would still be correct. They could have said, oh, left side goes up. We cross through. We bounce off. We come through. That would be correct on, in this class on, on the test. That would be correct. Everyone's going to have a slight, slightly different picture, but here's the things that we will all have in common. Our left and right hand sides are all going to do the same thing. We will all have the same x <coughs> intercepts, and we will all have the same bouncing and crossing occurring if we're all doing it correctly. All right? Questions? This thing's driving me crazy. I'm not even going to wear it. Whenever I haven't shaved in a while, it just keeps moving it down, 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 down. Ah, okay. Much better. All right. You ready for the steps? Formal steps. How are we doing? So here's a procedure, right? Okay, steps to sketch a polynomial function. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to squeeze them over here so I can leave myself some room to do an example over there. All right, so the first step, leading coefficient test, right? That will tell you the left and right behavior. Second step. x-intercepts. Well, we know how to do that, right? We have to set the function equal to zero. That's going to be the hard step. That's going to be the challenge. Let me see if I'm, I'm like just in, on camera. I think that'll be all right. The third step, find multiplicities. Basically, Tell, you're figuring out whether or not you're bouncing or crossing at each of those x-intercepts, right? And the fourth step is to sketch. That's it. So let's do the next one. All right, so how about this one? Sketch f of x equals negative x to the fifth plus 9x cubed. First step, leading coefficient test. Now, I'm going to write it down even though we've already done this. The degree of this is 5, and that's an odd number. The leading coefficient is negative 1, and that's negative, right? 
and because of that, we know that the left side went down and the right side went up. Right? Uh, no, I just got that backwards. It was up on the left, down on the right. All right, go back and look at that table, the chart that we made. Do you all agree with that? Any questions? X-intercepts, it's the hard part. Take the function and set it equal to zero. Greatest common factor, what do they both have in common? They, they both have an X cubed, don't they? Okay, so let me do that. I'm gonna write, I'm gonna pull an X cubed out what would I have left if I pull an x cubed? Negative x squared, good, negative x squared, and then this would be what? I pulled the x cubed out, right? So what's left here? Plus nine, right? Just plus nine. Yes? If it's even and negative, it's down, down. Uh, let me put the chart up here again. The chart looks like this. So if the degree is even, degree odd, leading coefficient positive, leading coefficient negative. It, I should have put this. If I did it wrong, you'll let me know. It should be this. Is that what I put? I did? I don't have down, up, then up, down? No. Let me see. That's not Let me see. Did you write it? Yeah. What the f <laughs> Okay, that's a brain fart. I apologize. I just, did, I just wrote it backwards. This is the correct way. My fault. I'm glad y'all brought it up, because, I mean, that's, I don't know why, I mean, I, I've been doing this for a long time, and I think that's the first time I've ever put the chart up wrong. First time ever. <clears throat> hey, I'll take, I'll take the blame. That's my fault. Okay, so, so it's this one, right? We have odd, right? We have an odd degree, which means we're on the bottom. And then we have a negative leading coefficient, so we're here. So up on the left, down on the right. Is that what the question was about? It didn't match the, t the chart? Okay, I apologize. All right, so we're still here, right? We pulled out the x cubed. We've got to handle this now. Is there anything we can do to that? Does anyone see it? Maybe I can help. Could I rewrite it like this? Is that the same thing? Yeah. It is. Does that help you see it? Do y'all recognize this? Hmm? Difference. Difference of squares. Hmm? Isn't that two things squared being subtracted? Right? Isn't nine three squared? Isn't it? I think you're used to seeing it more like this. If I gave you x squared minus 9, are you comfortable with the idea that this turns into x plus 3 times x minus 3? Difference of squares. Does that look familiar to you? Does that look familiar? So this would be correct, right? This is correct. But we have it the other way around. <clears throat> we have the nine, and 9 minus the x squared. So we would have, instead of this, we would have... 3 plus x, 3 minus x. All that happens in the formula is that they just change positions. <clears throat> is that all right? Now look, we pulled an x cubed out. You could pull a negative x cubed out. If you pull a negative x cubed out, then this becomes, let me just write it in a different color. If you had done this instead, if you had said, okay, I'm going to pull a negative x cubed out, 
then it would turn into x squared minus 9. And then maybe it would have been easier to see the difference of squares here. But that's not what we did. That's okay. It's fine as long as we have to recognize that this does turn into difference of squares. Questions? We are completely factored. We're going to set each of these equal to zero. x cubed equals zero. 3 plus x equals zero. 3 minus x equals zero. The only number you can cube and get zero is zero. If you um, subtract three on both sides here, you get negative three. And if you like move the x over, make it positive x on the right side, you get x is three. Can I trust that you can solve those? Can I trust that you can get those answers? Those are little, these are linear equations. These should be easy for you to solve, easy, relatively easy for you to solve. We've done the leading coefficient test. <clears throat> We've found the x-intercepts. I need to figure out the multiplicities. So when I go to do the multiplicities, I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at the factored form right before I set everything to zero, right here. And let's identify the powers on each factor. So what's the power on the first factor x here? What's the power on this factor? Three. Three is odd. Odd means cross. So this means that here I'm going to cross. I just like to put a C because that just tells me I'm going to cross there. And it's because this is odd, right? What about here? What's the power on this factor? One, and one is odd again. So that means what am I going to do here? Cross. What's the power on this factor? One. One is odd, so I'm going to cross here. See, the power matches up, these powers match with these x-intercepts. So I'm crossing at every x-intercept I have. All right? We're ready to draw. Any questions? Here comes my picture. These sketches are quick, okay? They shouldn't be, you don't have to spend as much time as you did on the quadratics. Okay, zero, three, and negative three. So at zero, I have an x-intercept. At 3, I have an x-intercept. At negative 3, I have an x-intercept. You ready to draw? Here's how I like to do it. What was my left behavior? My left was uh, up, right? And my right was down. So I know that on the left side, I'm going to be up over here. And I know over on the right side, I'm going to be down. I like to draw like that to start. I don't like to connect these. I don't like to connect this to here. I don't like to connect this to here. And the reason why is because I don't know if I'm going to bounce across yet until I start drawing. So as I draw and I go through negative 3, notice when I'm looking over, I know they all cross, so it doesn't matter. But when I'm going to negative 3, I'm looking at this one. I'm saying cross. So I'm going to draw and I'm going to cross through. OK, I've crossed through. Now I need, need to get back to 0. When I get back to 0, I'm going to cross again. So that means I'm going to come down. How far? As far as I want. Okay, I'm going to come down, and I'm going to come back up, and I'm going to cross through again. And then I've got to get back to 3. And when I get to 3, I'm going to cross through again. And then it's got to come down, right, like this. So I'm going to go ahead and just erase that and just go like that. There we go. There's my picture. That's it. We're done. What do y'all think? What's going to be the hard part, you think? Probably this, right? Probably the factoring. That's where most students have the issue. All right, let's, uh, let's do this. Um, we have not talked about factoring by grouping yet, have we, in here? Hmm, OK. Let me do. Uh, let me give you one. How about that? You all want to practice one on your own? Do you want to practice one or no? Yes. yes? You all want to try one? 
Y'all can work together, I don't care. Uh, let me just think of what I want it to be. Um, how about three, three, six, nine, okay. So I want you to sketch f of x equals x to the fourth plus 6x cubed, uh, sorry, yeah, cubed plus 9x squared. There we go. Follow the steps, talk to your neighbor, and how about we have some fun with this? If you get it, okay, you can go put it on the board just to try and draw it. See? see? And then we'll just look at it, people's drawings and see if they have the same thing. We'll see how long this takes. We've, it's uh, it's 11.55, so we've got 20 minutes. Let's see how long it takes you to do this. Y'all be careful on this one. There is a tricky part to this problem. You think you got it? Mm. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Wait, let me see what you did. So why are you determining bounce there? Or two. Okay, good. So, for those of you who are here, for those of you who got to this step, these are the exact same thing, right? X plus 3 is the same as X plus 3. So you rewrite this as X squared times X plus 3 squared equals 0. That's how you, I mean, you did it right, but I'm just saying, you, now you can see that you're going to have bouncing here and bouncing here. You're not going to have crossing, because these are the same points, right? Right, so you have to put them together 
and then set this to zero, set that to zero, and you get your two solutions. Does that make sense? Should we just talk about this together, or you want me to let you keep going? You're getting some looks. What did the what did the leading coefficient tell you uh, test tell y'all? What's it doing? Up and up, right? Up and up. Degree is even, leading coefficient is positive, right? When you set this thing equal to zero, this is second step, x-intercepts, you factor out an x squared, and you're left with x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals zero. Is that OK? Factoring the x squared plus 6x plus 9, you look at the number in the front, times that, that's 9. And then the number here, that's 6. You need two numbers that multiply to be 9, but add up to be 6. Those two numbers are 3 and 3. So that means you're going to do x plus 3 times x plus 3. So you're, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yes, x plus 3, x plus 3 twice, right? So that's where this comes from. This is the step I'm saying is tricky. These are the same thing. So we put them together into this. And now what you do is you set these equal to zero. And this you just have to think through. Okay, the easiest way I think to solve this is just to think through it. What number squared is zero? Zero, okay, so this is zero. Now, this squared has to be zero. So what would make, what would make this zero if x was what? Zero. Well, if x is zero, then this is three, right? We need to pick an x that would make this go away. Negative three, negative three right? If x is negative three, so that would be your solution here. That makes sense? If x is 0, this is true. If x is negative 3, negative 3 plus 3 is 0. 0 squared is 0. Now for the bouncing and crossing stuff, we come back to this, and we look at the powers to get the multiplicity. And the power on our first factor here is 2. That means that we are going to bounce here. And the factor, I'm sorry, the power on this factor is also 2, which means we're going to bounce here, right? Because these are even. Even bounce, odd cross, right? Make sense? So we can draw a picture now. For the picture, we would have... Well, we only have two x-intercepts, right? At 0 and at negative 3. Both sides go up. So I'm going to just put up here and up over here. doesn't matter how you draw those arrows going up. And now when I draw, I'm going to have to bounce off of this. So come down, bounce, and then come back and bounce off this one. How far up and down you go is totally up to you. So you can go all the way up here if you want. Just make sure that when you come down, you bounce. You could even just do that. That would be fine. You could do something like that if you wanted to. As long as you are bouncing off of these and going up on the sides. All right, let's do that last one over there because there's another type of factoring. This will be our last problem. Um, there's another type of factoring that I want to make sure everyone's comfortable with, and that is grouping. f of x equals x to the sixth minus 3x to the fifth minus 4x to the fourth plus 12x cubed.
So I want us to sketch this polynomial function. The end behavior, up, up, right? Up, up. X-intercepts, set it to zero. This is the part that's going to suck. All right, first step for factoring, first step for factoring anything is GCF. So do we have a GCF here? What is it? X to the third, right? We can pull an X to the third out of this. If we pull an X to the third, we will get X cubed minus 3X squared minus 4X plus 12 equals zero. Is that okay? You sure you don't have any questions? All right. What's left in here, all of that we need to try and factor. This has four terms, right? One, two, three, four. Let's just focus our attention on that for a moment, okay? Let's act like that's its own problem, and I'm asking you to factor this. Tables in my way. Okay, so I'm trying to factor this four terms. When you have four terms, we do grouping. Grouping. Have you all heard of it? Show of hands. Grouping? Yeah? The way we do grouping is this. So I'm just telling you here, I'm about to do grouping. That's what it's called. So if you need to get help with it, tutoring or something, you go say, hey, I need help with factoring by grouping. All right, so here's what you do. Right after the second term, right after, not after the minus sign, right after the second term, I like to draw a slash like that. What we're going to do now is we are going to ignore these two, and we're going to see, is there a GCF here? Out of just those two, is there something I can pull out? What? X squared, right? Two X's? I can pull an X squared out. And then I'm left with, what am I left with if I pull an x squared from here? x. And if I pull this x squared out, what am I left with? Minus 3. Good. Like that, right? Okay. Then what you do is you forget about this and you look at those. And here's the trick. You have to see, is there something you can pull out of this? Okay. Is there something you can pull out? Question mark. Is there something you can pull out that's going to leave you with x minus 3 again over here? So what I like to do is just put x minus 3 